Also at Bodyweight Warriors, today I've got five stretches that I do every single day based on this video right here in a follow along format as requested. For this routine, you are gonna need some equipment, primarily somewhere to hang from, such as the rings behind me, door frame put up bar. You're also gonna want somewhere to perform a couch stretch, so a wall or a sofa, and possibly some yoga blocks. Other than that, some time and space, and let's jump into this routine. Okay, so we're gonna start in a seated position to perform some hip swivels. So feet, outside shoulder width, hands behind, nice and upright with the torso. We're gonna drop both legs to the left-hand side to begin with, so moving, pausing for a few seconds, and we're gonna reverse it, drop to the right-hand side. We're gonna do five of these in total, so 10, I guess, back and forth, pausing for a few seconds, basically moving the legs in and out of both external and internal rotation. As much as you can do, try to keep that torso facing forward. Chest nice and upright. If you wanna make this a little bit more dynamic, you can try to come into an active position, keep yourself upright when doing back and forth, right? So we're gonna pause briefly. This is the fifth one. And then we're gonna go onto the right hand side now. I'm gonna to twist towards our right hand leg back leg at 90 degrees, bent to 90 degrees. We're gonna fold forward with this sternum going over this right knee. So we're gonna come down into a glute stretch. Think about rolling the hips over, not rounding too much at the back. We're gonna perform some PNF here. So I want you to think about basically trying to push this leg across your body, contracting the inside of the thigh. So we're gonna ramp up, going from 20%, 30%, 40%. I'm gonna go five, four, three, push the foot, five, two, three, one. On exhale, I'm gonna try and just shift further down into the stretch. Now, to increase this, I can think where my sternum is. If I move it further towards my foot, it's gonna challenge us a little bit more with that stretch over the glute. It's gonna move it also more towards the piriformis. But sit where you have a decent stretch. We're gonna hold now just for another 10 seconds here. You can do another rapid PNF if you want to, but just try to Breathe nice and deeply, and as you exhale, shift a bit deeper. Okay, let's come out of that. We're gonna twist, stick, keeping our legs in the same position, and we're gonna twist over this back leg. Now we're gonna try and actively work on opening up our hips here. So we're gonna use the glute, we're gonna keep our right knee down towards the ground, we're trying to open this left knee up as much as possible, using the glute actively, hold for a few seconds, and then come back to that starting position. We're gonna perform five reps in total here. Each one, as I said, just hold for a few seconds. This actually should be quite challenging because really we can try to open that maximally as much as possible on every single rep. So two more here. And then last one. Perfect, we're gonna come into the center position. We're just gonna rotate around exactly the same position. So we've got 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, 90, 90. We're gonna rotate round, sternum going over the knee, fold forward, keeping the back straight so we can do, rolling the hips. So we have a nice glute stretch. Okay, so with sternum over the knee, we're gonna think hand on the foot. I'm gonna try and push my foot across my body, contracting the inside of that thigh as said beforehand. Building up the contraction. Five, four, three, two, one. And I want you to try and exhale and then move deeper. As I said, we can also play with moving the sternum more towards the foot. I'm just gonna hold this for another 15 seconds. Again, nice deep breaths, breathing into the belly. And exhale and move deeper. A few more seconds. And I come back out of it, and we'll do that exact same thing. So we're gonna turn over this right hand leg now, and we're gonna try and actively open up the hip. Again, pulling both knees in opposite directions. Five reps, pausing for a few seconds on each rep. Pull the left knee down to the ground, the right knee open as wide as you can. So 
So five in total, so one more here. As wide as you can, beautiful. And then now we need to move over to perform a couch stretch. So this is where you're gonna need the sofa, a chair, a wall to perform your couch stretch. So we're gonna get nice low down towards the ground. We're gonna get that knee wedge close to the anchor that is supporting the foot. And then we're gonna take one step out with our knee, come forward onto the hands. And then we're just gonna let gravity do its work and pull this hip down towards the floor. This might already be kind of an intense hip flexor quad stretch for many people. So we're just gonna stay here. We're gonna do one PNF per position and we're gonna try and get more upright as we go. So we're gonna think about trying to push this knee down into the ground and pulling it forward by contracting the hip flexor. This is a little bit of a hard one to get, so you're gonna build it up over five seconds. So five, four, three, two, one. And then you're gonna try and think about pushing the hip closer to the ground and going deeper into this stretch. Now, if you can do from here, we're gonna go a bit more upright. So you might wanna get some yoga blocks. We can come forward a bit more. This is gonna bring us into more of a stretch. We can do that same contraction again, so we can try and pull that knee forward. Five, four, three, two, one. And again, we can try and get a bit more upright. And then if we wanna bias a bit more of the quad, we can go all the way upright, getting the bum onto the heel, but making sure that we don't arch the back here. We wanna think about actively pulling the hips under and tucking the glutes. And we're gonna hold this final position now for another 15 seconds, 90 seconds in total. And this should be quite an intense stretch going over the hip, but also into the quad as well. This one is all about the quality of this hip position. If you find you get up to here, if you're having to arch out of it, then just come down a little bit further, hinge a little bit further forward at the torso and really think about keeping that hip position. Okay, that's our left side done. You'll be thankful to know it's come forward. We're gonna bring that leg down. We're gonna put that knee as close as we can do underneath the foot. And again, we're gonna lift that left foot now forward and have our hands placed on the ground. And again, let gravity do its work. Think about pulling this hip down and forward. And then once we're in a comfortable position, let's think about that pier now. So I'm gonna try and pull my knee down into the ground, pulling it forward, contracting the hip flexor. Five, four, three, two, one. Again, I'm gonna try and push my hip down towards the ground and increase the stretch. We can do, let's get a little bit more upright. So get that support. Hand on the knee if you need to. Making sure we're, keep, we're keeping the hips tucked and keeping them low. Let's do another rep of that PNF. So pull that knee forward, actively contracting the hip flexor. Five, four, three, two, one. And again, try to push the hips forward here, forward and down into the stretch after you've done that contraction. Okay, so let's now keep going a bit more upright. If we can do, try to get all the way back. Remember, not arching the back, tucking the hips underneath, trying to get that bum towards your heel. I'm gonna hold this final position now, getting just for another 15 seconds. Good stretch now, going over the hip flexors, over the quad. There's nothing you can do but breathe. Okay, perfect. That is that side done as well. You can come out of that position and we're now gonna move on to our next stretch. So after we've opened up the hip flexors, it's time to use the hips and move into a deep squat position. So we're gonna come down as low as you can. If you struggle to sit in a squat, if you feel like you're, you're on your toes, then what I would suggest is just sitting onto like a sofa or a chair, something that can support the hips and getting as low as you can or elevating the feet. We're gonna take our left hand and we're gonna push our left knee out. Now the goal is to try and be able to straighten that hand, open the leg out nice and wide, pause for a few seconds and let it come back. 
So as you're doing this, we're also then just leaning into our right leg, feeling a greater stretch, a greater opening of the hips. Maybe five reps in total, pause for a few reps each time. Just try to push the knee as open as you can do. Doesn't necessarily matter if you can straighten that arm. So it's the fifth one here. So we're going to come and swap sides now. So grab your right hand ankle, right arm on the right knee, and just try to push and open that right leg. Pause for a few seconds in each one. Doesn't matter too much if the ankle comes up on this non-working side. Right, we're gonna incorporate a little bit of spinal rotation now. So staying in that squat, we're gonna to swap to the other side again. Right hand goes on left ankle. We're gonna try and reach up towards the sky, getting that elbow as high as we can, then extend the arm. Pause for a few seconds and come back down. This one is just about, I would encourage you to go bent arm first then straight arm because you can kind of compensate a bit if we just go straight arm. If we bend the arm first, we're really gonna force that thoracic rotation. I try to think about inhaling as we reach up and then exhaling as we come back down. Five and total, so this is the last one for me on this side. You can always take a pause as well if you're maybe not comfortable sitting in a squat for this time. Just pause it, get up, shake it out, and then come back to that squat position and resume. Okay, so that's left hand side done. Let's do the right hand side. Left hand grabs onto the right ankle. Reach up with the right elbow. Reach the hand. And come back down. Try to feel as you're doing this, we're going to drop the shoulder, left shoulder down and towards into the gap that we're creating in that squat. Inhale as you reach up. Exhale as you come back down. Last one here. All the way to the sky. And come back down. Right, so we've done a bit of decompression squatting. It's time to decompress the spine. I'm gonna do some hanging now. So we need to go to our hanging position. I've got some rings here. We're gonna start with a nice pronated hang. Feet assisted, let the arms lock, let gravity pull the entire body weight down. Completely passive hang. I don't think there's a problem with having the feet assisting. If anything, it can be quite nice, especially if you're kind of long, if you've got your knees close to the ground like this, we can actually walk the feet backwards slightly. So we end up into what is more like a hanging cobra. So we get this nice deep stretch going over the entire body. It also means that from a stretching perspective, we can hold things just a little bit longer because we've got our feet to take some weight off. It's not so taxing on the grip and we can focus on feeling a good stretch over the lats. So you can move around a bit from side to side. I'm gonna keep going just for another 10 seconds or so. If this is a bit challenging for you to hold, feel free to come down, pause, take 10 seconds rest, jump back up, keep going. Okay, I'm gonna step out of it. So that's, let's say set number one complete. I'm actually gonna perform another set. We talked about in the video how the lat is an internal rotator. So we can get more stretch by using a supinated hang position. So that's what I'm gonna do for round two. I'm gonna grab the rings of my palms facing towards me. And this time I'm just gonna drop down. I'm gonna feel like I can pull my sternum in. I'm actually gonna let my feet go in front of me. So I'm getting a bit of a rounding of the back. And then again, just letting gravity do its work, letting it sink down, feeling my shoulders elevate, reaching up towards shoulders, towards my ears. Pulling the sternum in, hands stay supinated, and just trying to have some nice controlled breathing. Keep going. As I said, if you need to pause, reset, that's not a problem. That total time, we're going after two minutes in total, that's what matters. 
A couple more deep breaths. Okay, perfect. So we're going to move on to the final stretch now, and that's going to be for the hamstring. So we're going to come down into kind of a moderate hamstring stretch, allow the knees to bend so the stomach can rest on the thighs. If you can't comfortably touch the floor here, we're just going to grab some yoga blocks and we're going to use them as a bit of an elevation so we can support ourselves in this position. But if you can touch the floor, that's also fine. We're going to perform some elephant walk. So in this slightly bent position, I'm going to think about pushing one knee forward, going towards the bending more, and I'm going to straighten the other leg, pushing it back. I'm going to pause for a few seconds, and I'm just going to reverse that motion. So one knee goes forward, one knee goes back. This is going to just basically bring one leg into a hamstring stretch, and the other leg is going to be reduced, but it's going to add some tilting to the pelvis. Want to get just a nice, slow, as you change breath, maybe change legs. So if you're inhaling or exhaling, just swaps between sides. And we just try to sink the hands down a little bit deeper. Get the stomach a little bit closer to the thighs. And allow it to floss a little bit at the hamstrings. Nice consistent movement. If you can get a little bit deeper as your hamstrings loosen up, you can come all the way down. Feeling the stretch maybe going now into the glutes and into the lower back as well. And that is basically the full five stretches that I try to get in every single day. You don't have to do it all in one go like we did in this video right here, but this is the follow along format. Take some time in each of those positions to feel them out. Maybe find where your own restrictions lie. Maybe one of them is easier than the other. Maybe that's an area that you could do with focusing on. As always, everything is in the description down below, all the details for other videos. And other than that, happy stretching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a strong week. Peace.